Well, four months to the day that Motor Vessel Ever Given was freed from her grounding in the Suez Canal, she has arrived at her first terminal to begin discharging cargo that was loaded over four months ago. Uh, today, Motor Vessel Ever Given arrived at the port of Rotterdam in the Netherlands. This is the port she was intended to head to after leaving the Suez. She kind of got held up for a little while there. Uh, the grounding that took place on March 23rd through the 29th, and then her subsequent arrest and detention by the Egyptian authority, the negotiation between her owners and the Suez Canal Authority and the Egyptian government has finally released the vessel after a very prolonged voyage from the Suez Canal. She's been restricted due to speed because of damage to the vessel. She is now arriving in the port of Rotterdam to begin her discharge. She was really limited down to about 10, 11 knots. Uh, she couldn't sail much faster when she was going through the English Channel, we noticed that she wasn't in the main traffic lane because of her slow speed. She was kind of off to the side, almost like you would be in the slow lane. Uh, and this is her coming into Rotterdam right here, an AIS report of her arrival into Rotterdam. You'll see the tugs coming in alongside of her. Uh, we're not sure about the extent of her damage. We know early on reports were her bow was damaged, her bow thruster room had flooded. So not exactly sure if she has her bow thrusters operational or not. Uh, she is going to be nursemaid in no matter what by tugs. And you see a school of them right around her right now trying to get her into the berth. Uh, she's going to dock right in front of the CMA, CGM, Ohio, and come on berth there and begin her discharge in Rotterdam. She is scheduled to offload in Rotterdam all the containers that were slated to come off. Uh, she was then scheduled to go to Hamburg and Felixstowe. However, Hamburg is not going to allow her in because of her slow speed and damage. And instead, she's going to head to Felixstowe, which is over in Great Britain, offload all her remaining containers. The containers that were intended to go to Hamburg will be transloaded onto another ever, uh, evergreen ship, the Util, and it will be sent across to Hamburg. Uh, the video this morning here is ever given in the port of Rotterdam. Uh, she came in really early this morning uh, uh, before dawn. Uh, so there's videos of her coming in, in the dark. You really can't see too much. But this is uh, her up against the berth right there. Those are the 40-foot containers on her that have to come off. You'll see the tugs here pushing her up against the berth, holding her there while she gets her line secured. She doesn't have the cranes on her yet. This is probably right after she uh, came up there uh, right alongside. You'll see them pulling the lines up that were on the tugs from the, the vessel. And you'll see them begin the process of getting the cranes across and start offloading her. So this is a long, intensive process here now to get her offloaded. It's going to take a, a good chunk of a day uh, to get her off. She's going to offload a lot of containers here. She's not going to load anything on board. So she'll begin to take off those containers, get them off, and then depart and head across over to Felixstowe. We don't know where she's going to the shipyard yet. That's to be determined. There are several shipyards in Europe that can handle her. Uh, Spain, uh, uh, France, uh, Ireland uh, has uh, dry docks where you can fit her and, and put her in. You'll see on there, uh, all the containers, the 20 footers are up there, up forward. There's gonna loop again, come back on. And then the 40 footers back aft here from the forward of the house, midships and all the way back to the stern. Uh, she is sitting pretty low in the water up forward, uh, but not, demonstrably lower. I don't notice really anything that's that's out of place with her too much. She didn't seem to appear to have a list. Uh, we know she's damaged. She's got trim tanks to balance it out. And as she starts shedding this weight, uh, she's going to start riding high in the water as she goes to Felix Stowe. A uh, lot of stories, obviously, this hits it. This is her right here at the berth uh, in Rotterdam. We'll see her right here. There she is. You'll see her up there at the berth uh, where she was. Uh, you'll see that the uh, CMA CGM ship has left and now an ONE ship is in there. The IBIS has come in there. Uh, this is the terminal at Rotterdam. If you've never seen the terminal at Rotterdam, it's huge, a uh, huge massive area here for terminal oil farm up here, but a large area here for containers. Uh, lots of stories on her are out there uh, in the maritime sector. There's one from G captain that's out there. Rotterdam welcomes Ever Given, uh, Splash 24-7 also has one, Ever Given Docks 
in Rotterdam with the video of it. And then Freightways also has it. Every given container is finally being offloaded at the port of Rotterdam. A little more detail here in this report, I would say. They talk a little bit about what's on board. There's a lot of uh, debate about what is on board this vessel and, and what, what's going to go off of her. Uh, she has cargo from all over the place. And one of the stories I think that's going to be really interesting to see happen here is what happens regarding the insurance claims against her. Uh, some of the containers will have cargo on board that may have spoiled, for example, or, or they're not there on time and therefore they're no longer needed and people have gotten alternative cargoes. So there's going to be insurance claims against that. Uh, the question is who comes and picks up the containers from the terminal, who's going to transport from the terminal, or some of these containers are going to remain in the terminal as ownership of the insurance company, in which case the insurance company would sell them off. Uh, there's people asking, are they going to open up every one of these containers? No, no that doesn't happen. Uh, there's no indication that ever given was involved in anything nefarious or, or illegal. Uh, yes, there's there's smuggling, there's there's legal trafficking all the time on containers because of the nature of the business of containers. But remember, Ever Given was scheduled for a month passage from the Far East until she arrived in Rotterdam. Her original schedule, which I just happened to have right here, had her leaving her last port in the Far East, which was uh, Taejong Palace, which is uh, in Malaysia on March 12th and not getting into Rotterdam until April 1st. So that's over three weeks for her to get into, get into Rotterdam to begin the offload process. And remember, she was on a cycle. She was on a cycle going from Europe through the Suez to the Far East. And one of the things that Evergreen wants to do is get this ship back in the rotation. They're missing a 20,000 box vessel in their Europe to Asia routes. Uh, and that has cost them money. It's cost everybody money right now because of the slow up uh, in, in or excuse me, the, 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 the slow offloads of vessels because of the congestion in ports right now. So one of the things we're going to see is, is what happens to Ever Given once she offloads finally in Felix Stowe. We'll be keeping an eye on her. We've also seen lots of other stories going on. Again, I, I recommend, it, not just because I do it, but look at the videos I've posted since ever given has gone aground there's been a lot going on in the maritime sector you know we had a ship come into taiwan and take out a series of container cranes uh we've had accidents uh but more most importantly we've had this huge surge in shipping going on right now there is <clears throat> backlogs of vessels at terminals at ports we're seeing issues around the world. South Africa just got hit by a cyber attack. This is after South Africa suffered disruptions because of rioting in the streets. Remember, Europe is extremely, I mean, Europe is dependent on Asia for goods, commodities, oil from the Middle East. Uh, and, you know, one of the things we tend to focus as Americans is how does this relate to Americans, but we should be thinking about how this relates to the rest of the world. One of the things that we always want to talk about here is the relationship of oceanic trade to geopolitics, for example. China is in the midst of developing the Belt and Road Initiative. That is access to exports and imports via the sea and via land routes. So that should one be closed, there's always alternatives and, and options for them. Europe is really dependent on this very similar trade. They need to be able to get to the Middle East to get their oil. They need to get to Asia to get their goods. And should a shutdown of the Suez happen, and remember, the Egyptians didn't shut the Suez, this was an accident, but the Egyptians could shut the Suez. And there's other players like Turkey and the Eastern Mediterranean have that option to, to do things. And then with, with instability in places like South Africa, Mozambique, uh, we see, you know, even the, the Cape route has questions associated with it. The Russians are, in the meantime, advertising their Arctic route. Hey, Arctic route, open for business. You just have to take Russian pilots on board and hire Russian icebreakers to get you through. But we will get you through the northern route. It's faster and it's guaranteed. So there's a lot of geopolitics going on here that, that should be watched. Again, Ever Given caught the world's attention because a vessel got stuck in the Suez for six days. But what we should be thinking about is the importance of oceanic trade and oceanic shipping in not just economics, but the politics, the military, the societal issues, you name it. it it's all there. 
So it's a quick update. Had to post something about Rod- uh, Ever Given getting into Rotterdam. Follow up when she gets into Felix Stowe, and hopefully by then we'll see where she is going for her shipyard. And this insurance claim is still being ironed out. There's no telling how much money the UK P&I Club, which is the insurance company for Evergreen, uh, for this ship, excuse me, Evergiven, uh, is going to have to pay out in charge of claims. The, the, the initial reports already say that millions, if not billions, are being filed against them for late demerge charges and repercussions from the closing of the Suez Canal for six days. So she's in Rotterdam, beginning the process of offloading. Hopefully we'll get some new videos of her moving some containers off onto the terminal there. This is her just coming up against the berth right there. If you enjoy this video and you enjoy videos about shipping, then, hey, subscribe to What's Going On With Shipping. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Also, give it a thumbs up or comment so that it hits the algorithms and it gets spread across YouTube and feel free to spread it across social media. Until our next episode and our next event with the Ever Given, this is Sal signing off.